Hello and a very warm welcome to this mid-November episode of The Old Shop. It's quite a grey kind of day out there, quite misty and damp as befits the time of year. It's old All Souls Day today in the Julian calendar, so this is the time of year when the wild geese fly over and all those resonant um, feelings of the time of year surface. Uh, the colours are beautiful out there, really, really lovely. And I've got a bit of a video of that to show you a bit later in the video as well. I'll be lighting my wood burner later. Um, I think just that's all there is to say, really. So I hope you'll enjoy watching. It's a very grey day today in November and I thought I'd have a little walk down the other way from the heath along the lane and the colour of the bracken here, I think probably the grey weather is actually highlighting how much it's glowing but it's just so lovely I thought I'd like you to have a look at it as well. I'm going to walk right down towards the end of the lane because I want to go back to the, the place I showed you. Oh. A long time ago now which is the source of the hundred stream and I, I haven't really pinpointed really um, precisely what is the actual source because I don't know if you remember the video if you were watching then but it is really hard with these uh, water channels the agricultural channels that you have to drain the fields it's really hard to see where they end and where the actual source of a stream might be but it has to arise from the ground somewhere so this is the field maple it's, it's so lovely the way it goes so, so it's such an intense golden color in the autumn you can always see the field maples from a distance and the other very distinctive one in the hedgerow here is the elm just at the top you see there's very very lime green color um, bits sticking up and they, they are little bits of elm. Lots more elm here. I don't think people realise how widespread elm is in our hedgerows because of Dutch elm disease which everyone knows wiped out all the large trees. I think it was in the mid 70s. We used to have a big elm tree in the garden when I was a child, a huge one, and that succumbed as they, as they all did I think to Dutch elm disease but in the hedges there's lots and lots and lots of it whichever hedge you look a hedgerow you look at close to here and I imagine that lots of other places as well I think they're just not going to get to full as far as anyone knows anyway they're not going to grow to a full size 
the Alexander seeds here on the dried stems really really black and again they usually show up a lot at this time of year I love it when the oaks go this color the kind of bronzy shades and then the ivy climbing up the trunks of course it's the same green and it's that lovely combination of colors I always look forward to every year it doesn't last for that long because then of course the leaves come down and that's the end of that little um, episode but I love it just in November when it's like that the bramble leaves go really vibrant hues and the stems of course are purple so it's very very colorful Here we are at the spot that I think of as the source. I don't know whether it actually is or not. Um, but I kind of had to make a mark somewhere and I think it's here. But as you can see, the vegetation is still such that I can't actually get down to where the water is. Um, which is interesting because it's still up as high as this. I must. I think I came early in the year this year and it has all gone down completely i think often it's the around february time is is the most bare and barren month everything has finished and gone down into the earth and nothing really is has uh, come up again <laughs> so it's very beautiful just as it is i love all these seed heads and flower dried flower heads and the ivy flowers is turning into berries here as well and seed heads but I might just walk a little way down the green lane, which is just here, which is not very ancient, as you can see down there. And I, I followed this along before, and there is a water channel all the way along here, and it does come to an end in the end. It's just really hard to tell where the source is. It's marked as the source on the map, uh, this area here. And also, the way phones are now, they, it shows you, it gives you the location, and it has been saying 100 stream just there. And in fact, by the road as well, it says 100 stream, where I turned into this little area. As you go further along, it doesn't say that. So I don't know. It's really hard to say, because they do, they, as I said before, the fields are just drained into these ditches and channels. I don't know if you can see water down there. There is, there is water in there. Let's see if I can show you down there. But whether it's flowing from the source I don't know. I know in other counties it might not seem like a big deal. Um, but here, there's, we don't really have holy wells. Well, I think there are only about three named wells that I can think of in the whole of Norfolk. Some of which we'll look at, I think, at a later in a later video. Because I'm thinking of using the idea of the well, or the holy well, for the next candle I do at Candlemas. So we will definitely end up exploring that whole area. And this bit here, again, you can see the water is moving. I love it anyway. Something very evocative about it because this is certainly the start of the hundred stream, one way or another. And that hundred stream goes down, it joins uh, the canal further down, and then that, that in, in turn joins the River Ant. And that goes into a broad, I think it's Barton Broad, and then comes out the other side again. And then it becomes the River Yare, which is a big river in Norfolk. And then that flows onto the sea and comes out in Yarmouth, Great Yarmouth, on the east coast of Norfolk. So just this little ditch here, or somewhere along here, is where the whole of that water starts that actually ends up in the sea at Great Yarmouth. There's a great wide estuary. So no wonder our ancestors, they would have known where the start of the stream was, I'm sure. They wouldn't have been, had the waters muddied, so to speak, with all the agricultural activity that we've had for centuries here now. And it would have been a special place. And I wouldn't be surprised if we'd found the real place, the right place, whether you would find uh, prehistoric remains or traces there, like maybe a, a buried axe or something like that. But I think it's very unlikely to come to light now. But aren't the colours lovely? Isn't it really evocatively Novembery? 
I don't know if everybody loves it like I do because it obviously is a sign that everything is closing down for the winter we're going to have cold days it's going to be a while before we have those longer brighter days but if you love the the beautiful autumn mellow kind of soft gentleness then this is your time of year too